So, hello everyone. I'm Kevin Funk. I'm working for KDAP as well as for KDE still. So, I'm still around there. And today I'm going to talk about uh, how to implement custom Qt Quick components using OpenGL. Just right from the start, we had a relatively similar session uh, right in front of this. I'm trying to tackle this a bit more from a perspective of the, of the non OpenGL guru, because I'm not one. So I'm just someone who knows a bit of OpenGL, but I'd like to write custom uh, quick components with it. And the idea of this talk is um, how do we create a new QML elements uh, at all? And the steps I'm going to do in this talk is um, how do I create a custom com uh, QML component in QML? Just the, the basic of it. Um, then uh, head over to um, how do we use QQuick item? Then head over to how do we um, re-implement stuff so we can use more C++ features and OpenGL. And then I'll also show a bit of what has been talked about in the previous talk, uh, a bit about QQuick frame buffer object. I'm missing the outline here, so sorry for that one. I just uh, start right away with how do we do a simple QML, uh, re-implement a simple QML object in C++. So the basic uh, steps are subplot either from Q object or quick item, register the object uh, to get it known to the QML environment. In QML, we import the uh, module and in QML we also use it like in any other standard item. So basic key object, I guess everyone is aware of that one. We define a custom class random timer, inherit from key object, and we'd like to get that in QML. That's the implementation, not much of detail either. How do we get the QML engine to know about the type? So we start the app, we call the QML register type function, which registers our custom type into a specific namespace, into a specific major and minor version with a custom name. And that's it. We create a QQuick view, um, main.qml, which is loaded afterwards. And with the registration, uh, the type is automatically available to uh, main.qml as soon as we import the right namespace. Um, yeah, just explaining it again, in more detail. That's how it looks at QML, right? We have the, the random timer. This got imported uh, through this custom namespace. That's just been a non-visual item so far. So how do we create guy items? That's the next step. So just by the slide. Um, there are multiple ways to do that. Um, uh, in this talk, I just wanted to go through the uh, idea of, I start with a simple QML custom item written in QML. Notice it will, it will be slow and then iterate so I can get to the, the more faster version later on. So um, if you look at the outline, first of all, I'm going to implement, oh, like, I'm going to show you how to implement a custom component using uh, the canvas item QML to just uh, draw a simple triangle. Uh, then I'm going over to the to QQuick painted item. Then I'll show how to do it with QQuick item re-implementing update painted node. And then uh, this is, I think that's what been, we've been talking about in the previous talk. Um, I'll just briefly show that one because otherwise I'll overlap too much. Um, that's just briefly handled, and that one is QFrame frame buffer object. And at the end, I'm going to summarize what to use when and what's better, what's not. Okay, first one, canvas item. That's pretty easy. We want to get this nice little triangle here. Um, in this case, we just use uh, the canvas element from QML, from, from Qt Quick. We have an uh, on paint handler, there we can get a context, and then we use pretty much uh, HTML5-like syntax for drawing stuff. So we begin a path, we move the line to some position, to another line, to another line, and then we easily get the triangle. That's it. 
nothing really special here. So you can do triangles in QML without writing C++. That's something really cool. Didn't know about it. Uh, th I think the uh, canvas item was, um, I don't know when it was introduced, but it wasn't part of Qt5 directly, I think. I don't know. Um, right, that's the implementation of uh, a custom file called triangle canvas. And that's how it's used in, a, in the main.qml file. We have a window um, that gets a specific size and we create this triangle canvas that we just created. It fills the parent and using that we get this one. Nothing spectacular. But um, we could just uh, try to have a look at the um, QML profile output, how that behaves if we like resize it a lot of time. Um, do it like this, exit it. And in this case, we already see we have tons of calls uh, for the on pane signal handler because each time you resize the window, um, the QML engine asks the canvas item to repaint itself. And you can already notice this takes quite a bit of time. Imagine if you have like 50 of these triangles in the scene. This is not going to fly, so this is going to be really slow. Each time you have JavaScript evaluation, and yeah. Um, so there must be something better to it, right? Doing a triangle in QML. Let's get back to the slides. So, yeah, next step, there's this Q quick painted item. I can still create a uh, QML item. And I can still use my uh, well-known Q Painter API, which I've been using for uh, tons of years. So I don't have to do OpenGL. That's cool. So yeah, this time we create a new class triangle item. It inherits from Q Quick Painted item. It gets a, pro a random property that's not really that important right now. The important part is we have to overload one function called Paint, which gets a Q Painter instance, this overrides a uh, base class function. And implementation is really simple as well. So constructor, nothing important. Here's the overloaded method. So it, it overloads the paint method. We get our bounding rect. And then we create the polygon to describe the triangle and then paint it. And that's all. Uh, to register it, it's similar to, well, similar to just uh, exporting any uh, C++ object to QML. We call QML register type again, put it into namespace and so on. Uh, how does this one look like? So we import the namespace, we create a triangle, fill it in parent, and we have a triangle again. But This time, there is no JavaScript involved for uh, rendering the uh, triangle, of course. So all is offloaded to C++ right now. No longer any JavaScript validation as soon as we um, recess all this. Want the proof? <laughs> yeah. So no AT plus calls for paint or something in QML anymore. So that's already cool. Um, but there are some restrictions to it. So if you use Q quick item, there, you still don't have um, real hardware acceleration, but because you still need to use the Q Painter API to do the drawing calls. And there is a two step operation needed to do this because uh, first, um, you use the QPainter code to draw onto a surface that needs to be rasterized, and then again, this is uh, transferred over to the scene graph and then drawn again. So there's always a bit of slowness involved because there are two steps. And using the actual scene graph, which uh, the QML engine provides, is always faster. So, how do we do that? And that's the next one exporting a scene graph item class. Just a, a bit of an intro to the quick, Qt Quick render thread. So usually there are two threads in Qt Quick. There's a render thread and a main thread. Um, 
The render thread asks the main thread for the item tree, what is written in the QML file. And then what internally in the QML engine happens is that QML, the QML engine builds up a parallel graph of nodes representing the item tree. And those parallel nodes are the so-called sync graph nodes, which the render thread can more easily handle to render the stuff. That's the really, really, really uh, basic overview of that. So you have an item tree in QML, and then this um, QML engine magic makes a parallel hierarchy of that tree in QSync graph, Qt quick sync graph nodes. About those nodes, that's the, the, the basic inheritance chart of it. So there's a QSG node, which is the basic node in Qt quick sync graph. This has several subclasses like the QSG geometry node, which defines a geometry and a material geometry for how the shape looks like and material for how the surface surface looks like. And there, there are actually many more um, details here. You can at attach custom shaders, stuff like this. I'm not going into detail about that one. That's really something for Giuseppe and the other OMGL gurus. But that's the idea. So in your custom class, you um, create such a, a sync graph yourself, so you can optimize how, Q, or, or how the hand render thread actually does the stuff. So you don't need to go through QPainter. Again, going back one slide, um, the separation of threads, that's not for all platforms. That's, I think, every platform has the threaded render by default, but on uh, Misa drivers on Linux, there you use uh, another approach, so the rendering actually happens also in the main thread, as far as I understand. That's true for that system, for, for instance, because I just have to mesa to drivers. Um, yep. Okay, so the next version, sync graph item. We inherit from Qt Quick item again, uh, create a constructor. And this time we need to overload this function here called update paint node, gets an QSG node instance and an update paint node data instance. And again, this overrides the base class method. So we use override here to be sure. Yeah. Looking at the implementation, relatively easy as well. I think you need to uh, set that flag. Otherwise, it isn't rendered at all because usually Qt Quick item is a non-visual item, so you need to set a flag. And in the re-implementation of update paint node, you check whether the, the size of the item has changed. If it hasn't changed, we just return a previously allocated item. And in the other case, we try to replace the old item with a new one. So we create a new geometry node set the flag that it owns material and geometry and do more stuff on that. So next slide is right the, the, at the end of this file. So it gets long. We get the boundary act of the Qt Quick item, create a geometry node, set it some data so we know it is a, a 2D cloud more or less. And then we define the 2D cloud. And that's again similar to what we wrote in the QML canvas item and the other class, it's just defining the three dots of the rectangle, nothing more. We set the geometry, give it the material, so we actually have some, uh, so the, 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 the drawing is filled, and we return the rectangle, and that's all it. Yeah. I'll just go back a few slides and show the code. Is that the right one? Oh, that one looks like the Internet Explorer with tons of ad blockers installed. <laughs> Gotta remove that one, okay. Uh, set it as active, and this is still the wrong, sorry.
that one it is, I hope. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. This time, no QPainter API involved. That's just creating very specific nodes for the scene graph who already knows how to render a specific point cloud. So you tell it that's point 2D and give it a material and this all happens uh, automatic, automatically. That's cool. Um, any questions so far? Are you surprised? No? All right. When we created the geometry, we must apply uh, 2D uh, line 59. Yes. So this this is like what is the purpose for it? For the geometry. Sorry. What's the purpose of this uh, vertex data as point 2D? So. The um, that's basically the, the, the data storage for the point to the cloud. So you create the geometry that already has an internal data structure for keeping the point cloud. And this one just gets the point at the right data. And then again, the next lines, you just set the points as you wish it to have. So there are, I think there are multiple things to do here. It can be textured point, colored points, or it can have additional attributes. There are tons of ways to um, describe that one here. I'm just taking the, the very, very uh, um, simple version of it. Does it help? Yeah. Okay. So that's again one of our examples. It's a bit more of an elaborated example, so it just doesn't show a filled triangle, which is boring, right? So. This one does a bit more. So it animates the triangle, it changes the, the internal filling of the triangle. And that one is also all done with um, using Graph API. If we look at the implementation here. That's update paint node again. That's all the same as before, almost all the same. That's where it starts to get interesting. Um, this time we were using a so-called transform node, which is um, a node in the scene graph which takes care of applying a matrix to a subtree of, a, of, a, of scene graph nodes. So we create that one. It's owned again. That's all for uh, all these set flex owned by things are of course used to clean up after yourself, after you delete the root uh, node then it will clean up all the children as well, so you need to set it, this one. Um, but let's have a look at the transform node. So this is still the same as before, geometry node. This time it's colored. Yeah, and the interesting part is that we have a matrix defined here, which rotates the triangle. And this matrix is set onto the transform node, which takes care of uh, handling what's, whatever's inside the rotation matrix. More color handling, we, um, we change the, the color each time we, we call the render thread. Uh, I think that's even done via timer. So yeah, each time a timer triggers, which update the color here. And we reuse that updated color in the update paint node class. The, the, the top level node, we tell that geometry has changed and that um, this one is dirty now and the scene graph needs to update the render and all this internally triggers an update, right? So that's the end result of that one. Profiling? 
Yeah, you'll nothing. Uh, you won't see anything here. You do see something like this. That's probably because I didn't use anchors fill in uh, parent here. Yeah, but this is negligible. You always have that um, because you have the top level uh, QML item which will resize um, its children item. But this actually doesn't have any beefy code which needs to be executed. That's just updating properties. So you, you also see it um, very low mean time. And yeah, that's one I wanted to talk about, but in, the, in fact, I think that's uh, Pepe already had in the previous talk, pretty much covered this one. This is about QQuick frame buffer object renderer. This is a class which uh, is less useful for defining uh, condensed items in the scene graph, but it's more useful for uh, using existing Open, OpenGL code for rendering a complete background, for example. So you have an existing 3D scene which renders a car or renders whatever, and then use Qt Quick to uh, render your custom controls on it. And in order to render the car which is underlying under your Qt Quick controls, you usually use that one, Qt Quick Frame Buffer Object Renderer. That's also used by Qt 3D as the main class, so any, I think the, the root Q3D node has that one as backup, which does the, yeah, <laughs> uh, right, so this is the, the, the begging part of the Q3D node. What you need to do here, you um, re-implement, sorry, you re-implement create frame buffer object to control the created uh, frame buffer object in OpenGL. And then you re render to call your custom OpenGL code. And that's already the, the interesting part because you need to be really, really careful what you call in here. Mm. Um, right. Um, that's just done internally by the render thread. That one takes care of calling all the uh, render methods on the objects line in there. But would I expect it to be called 69 per second? We'll, we'll see that late, uh, right away because um, we have some debug statements in there. So you can see how many times it's called. But yeah, it's called multiple um, times um, per, um, rent, uh, per, per reprint. So yeah. We have the demo here. Let's check or find that one. Text change G node. to do it this way. All right. So, yeah. In order to keep it simple, I didn't re-implement uh, doing a complete triangle in here. I just reset the background. So the code gets a lot easier to read because you don't need to create uh, vertex buffer objects and vertex area objects, just to keep it very simple. So we have a cute, quick item a standard code quick item on top here, this item, and the background is drawn by the queue quick frame buffer object renderer. Let's look at the code. QML code It's relatively in, uh, simple. We have a top level item. There's our custom queue quick frame buffer object renderer object. And that's just the rectangle we saw below, uh, on top of it. So it's a rectangle and a text area. Again, the show. Okay. Um, so, what magic does happen in here? 
So we create a new class called logo in FBO renderer. Um, inherits from this class here. We talked about it before. Gets constructor, destructor. We learned that we first need to uh, re-implement create frame for object. We do that down here. And this one takes care of uh, defining the right uh, format for it. So you can have control over that. So you create the format, set uh, the attributes you like to have, a number of samples, for instance, the, the, the type of it, and then we just return a new type of it. And in the render code, you have to pick up the this wrapper around OpenGL code, which is called QOpenGL context current context functions. This one is used so you don't nail yourself on a specific uh, OpenGL version. So this wraps all the Q, uh, the OpenGL API and then just decides whether it can use OpenGL directly or whether it can't use it at all on the specific platform and then just decides whatever there is. So we're keeping it pretty simple here. We just clear the color, set it to a specific color and um, clear after us. And update needs to be called in order to inform that um, this one needs to be uh, re-rendered on the scene. Yeah, that's it. And you can see you're pretty quickly, um, you can move over to OpenGN land if you want. And in there you can do whatever you want, but you have to be really, really careful about uh, keeping the OpenGL state in stack, uh, intact. And I think that's one other, that's something you've seen in uh, Giuseppe's OMG, uh, OMGL talk right before. You have to be really careful not to confuse the cute quick renderer and destroy that one's state. Otherwise, you just get nothing on your screen. And with that, I'm already done, actually. That's what I wanted to tell you. Any questions? Ah, yeah. We forgot about that one. So we see the debug out. So the question was, I'm not sure if it got over here, how many times the render function is called. So let me clear that one. I'll run the example again. Um, you see right after startup, uh, the logo FBA, FBAO renderer constructor is called. And then each time the scene graph uh, requests an update, the render function will be called. So this is multiple times per second. I'm not sure if that's synced to the, the, the update rate of the screen. Should it? Yeah, but that's... Okay. Um, in the update paint node uh, method, um, what kind of things should you avoid to uh, things that might break batching? I don't think I can tell you a lot about that one. Um, sorry, I think I have to pause on that one. I don't know. Any more questions? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, is the source code of this uh, somewhere available? All these examples? Yes. Um, especially the last one, that's... That's what I'm most interested in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that one is... Um, there's a way, way, way more complex example available uh, in the cute examples about that one. It's called Texture in Gnode. So I basically just made it very, very simple to explain, so I stripped a lot of the details. That's one uh, I think Lustlo created for explaining QQuick frame buffer object. 
okay. that one's rendering the Qt logo usually, transforming it, rotating it. There's a lot and lot more detail on that one. You can look at that one. Okay, that's in the uh, examples. Well, yeah, Qt declarative examples directory. Uh, what is the value achieved between rendering using uh, frame buffers or rendering using uh, scene graph node? Sorry, say it again. What is the value or advantage between using a frame buffers object versus using the Qt scene graph of the painted node? Um, wow. Um, there. Let me just think about it. One. I mean, in this case, of just using the Qt scene graph API, you don't get to run your own OpenGL code. That's all hidden behind the nodes implementations. Um, just in this case, if you use the Qt frame buffer object, you can actually run your own OpenGL code. So that's why you use that one. But basically, what I see is that you can achieve the same functionality using both. I mean, in scene graph node, you just have a geometry and material yeah. which simplifies, simplifies things. But here, you just do it like raw object. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there are special circumstances where you need to, where you need to call raw object because of special needs. I mean, the scene graph uh, node API just has a specific set of components, so it can't represent everything you ever need to do. So you might need to call your own OGL functions. One last question. What if I want to change a property inside the, the frame buffer object uh, since it's called from another thread? thread? Um, the frame buffer object, let me check if I can see the help. There should be a synchronized function. That's the one where transfer the uh, you can write custom properties on this um, class, so you can create Q properties here, but you can't use them directly. And for this, you need to uh, re-implement synchronize, and there you pull over the properties you have in your class onto another storage, and then you can use them in the other functions. So that's a synchronization point. That's a specifically for that one. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, question for, for me, uh, a little bit unrelated to the presentation. Uh, when is KDEB going to open source the presentation tool, QML presentation tool, the latest? <laughs> uh, I think we have that on the to do list. But we still want to make the code a bit more pretty. I think that's the yeah, current that's, status. That's the answer that I got for a couple of years. Now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm not in charge of that one, so I I really don't know. But yeah, I would love to have it public as well. Okay. Anything else? Um, for the quick QT, is there? Is there some um, easy way or functionality to import um, um, to ID stuff like, so like models from, for example, Blender files or object files? I think it's more a question for Q3D. They have API for that. Right. So you can just import models. Okay. I think if you look at the KDAP booth, there's this uh, auto demo, Qt Automotive demo, and there they have the, the just some wiper car, I think, rendered on in the Qt 3D thing. And that's just a, what's the format called? I don't know. But that's using a model of the car. In, in, in your uh, Q quick painted item example, uh, the, the update paint node, the node you're receiving in there, is that always going to be either the node you return earlier or another time there? And yeah. Nothing yeah. Else. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah, you just usually just cast it to your node type and yeah, 
if it's null, then you don't use it, and if it's not null, then it's your type you're expecting. Okay, cool. I guess so. Thank you.